Hey guys, it's Demi from Demi's Divine Designs, and today we're going to be doing a free pattern from Bagstock Design called the Pelican Tote. This is a very quick make. It's simple. It doesn't use a lot of different hardwares, and you can make it easier by the type of fabric that you use. I like to use vinyl, so of course it's going to be a little more difficult. Here is the bag that I made when I tested this pattern, and it's now going to be my everyday bag. Here it is. It is a beautiful tote bag where you don't have any hardware attaching the handle comes together so quickly and yes that is buffy the vampire slayer fabric i have a problem it's fine the back mirrors the front just doesn't have the zipper and we're going to be doing another buffy themed bag with this just not this one so let's hop into it I, and i will show you the materials and the pattern pieces for this bag we're going to need three different types of fabric for your main exterior piece, that's gonna be like the accent piece where the zipper pocket is, you're going to need a fat quarter of that fabric. Today, I'm using a water resistant canvas that I got from Do or Die Custom Fabrics and it's Buffy themed. <laughs> anyway, on to the next one. For your uh, contrasting exterior piece, I'm using this black kind of like holographic-y mood vinyl, like mood ring type vinyl. I got this from Joann's. The pattern recommends that you have a half of half a yard of this. And then for the lining fabric, I'm using just a quilt weight cotton that I also got from Joann's. The pattern recommends that you have a half of yard of this as well. Okay, interfacing for this bag. Depending on how much quilt cotton you use is going to be how much of the lightweight woven interfacing you're going to need for the bag since i'm only using it for the lining and the zipper pockets i think i used maybe a half a yard that sounds about right yeah so anytime you have quilt cotton make sure you're using some woven interfacing like sf 101 the difference that i'm doing today for the bag is what i'm using for my structure the pattern does recommend that you use a uh, foam if you're making the structured version of the bag I don't have any foam on hand, so I'm using a fusible fleece. I did use a stiffer interfacing for the first bag I made, so we're going to see how the fusible fleece works. And I'm also going to need a half yard of this. The pattern does recommend a yard, but half yard works fine. For the extra material that we're going to need for this bag, it's not much since there's not a lot of hardware or anything crazy going into the bag. So you're going to need scissors. I have a bunch of little pairs because I use them for different things. So I'm going to be using little scissors, little one by six inch rulers. I have two, one that is seen really good on light materials and one that is seen really good on dark materials. This is only needed in a few spots. Stiletto seam ripper combo, always good to have. A marking utensil, double sided tape. I only have this so I can attach my tag. And I get my tags from Heartwood and Hyde. Pinking shears is very helpful in this bag process, and I highly suggest you have these. If you don't, you could just use your little scissors and cut little notches into the corners. I'll tell you when when we're going through the pattern. Zipper tape. I'm using this uh, zipper tape that already has pulls on it that I got from my local sewing shop to cut for the two zipper pockets, one on the exterior and one on the interior. The only piece of hardware that we're using are magnetic metal snaps. And I am, I got this off of Amazon. You're also going to need a healthy stash of clips. From your main exterior fabric, you're going to need one cut of your exterior front center top panel. If you were using cotton fabric, you're also going to need a cut of woven interfacing to go with this. Since I'm using the water resistant waterproof canvas. I'm not interfacing any of these. You can if you would like. You also need one cut of your exterior front center bottom panel to go along with these. This is where our zipper is going to go. And then you're going to need one cut of your exterior back center panel as well. From your exterior accent piece, you're going to need four cuts of your exterior side panels, two going in one direction and two going mirrored. You are also going to need four cuts of your closure tab. Since I am using vinyl, I do think doing both 
um, sides of the closure tab is going to be a little too thick if I do it that way. So I'm doing two of my exterior vinyl, two of my lining, and since I'm using quilt cotton for my lining fabric, I am also cutting, I also cut out uh, two cuts of woven interfacing. Then out of your lining fabrics, you're going to need two cuts of your main lining panel piece and two interfacing pieces since I'm using quilt cotton for my lining. And also from your main lining panel piece, you're going to need two cuts of the stabilizer that you're using to beef up your bag. For me, it's going to be this fusible fleece interfacing. Now for the pieces that don't have pattern pieces, you're going to need one cut for your of your lining fabric for your exterior zipper pocket piece. You're also going to need two cuts of your lining fabric for the lining zipper pocket as well. And you're also going to need two cuts for your straps. I'm using that fancy vinyl for that. For your pocket pieces, you can also choose to interface them if you would like. I don't really like interfacing pocket pieces, so this isn't going to bug me. Now we're going to go on to building the bag. The first thing we're going to work on is the exterior zipper pocket piece. For working on the main exterior piece, you're going to need your exterior lining piece, your exterior top, exterior bottom, and the longer of your two zipper cuts. You're also going to need a healthy stash of clips, your tag, and double-sided tape. So let's start on building the exterior part of the zipper. What we're going to do is take our zipper and take our exterior bottom piece, have the zipper going in the orientation you would like when closed, so mine's going to close that way, flip it with the teeth, DVDs, going down on top of your fabric, and then we're just going to clip this into place. I did cut my zipper slightly longer, just because I like having that extra wriggle room. So we're going to clip that right along the edge here. Then once you have that clipped, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and base this into place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that stitched on, grab your lining piece and put it right sides together with your exterior going over the zipper and center that along the panel, lining it up with your exterior, especially if your zipper is cut longer like mine is. And we're going to clip that into place. Once that's clipped, it's going to look like this. My pocket panel is slightly bigger. It may have just been how I cut it, but as long as it is covering your zipper, your zipper and your exterior, you should be fine. And we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this edge again at a quarter inch seam allowance, connecting everything together. Once you have that set, you're going to pull the exterior and the lining right, wrong sides together and pressing the seam. You could either do that with an iron or with your fingers. I'm just going to use my fingers and give that a nice press. Then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that set, it should look like this, where you have your exterior bottom panel going downwards, your lining sticking very far downwards, and your zipper up here. To bring the lining up to the zipper, flip this over, and then take your bottom of your lining panel and pull it up, lining it up with the top edge of your zipper, clipping that in place. Then once you have this clipped like this, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch along this edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that set, we're going to work on attaching the top panel. So flip this again, right side up, and take your top panel. If you have a directional print, you're going to want to align the bottom of your directional print to the top here and we're going to make sure that it's lined up with our exterior bottom just flip like this 
move your zipper out of the way and line that up along the zipper. And again, we're gonna clip into place along the top raw edge. Once you have that clipped into place, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and stitch along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, securing the exterior to the zipper and the lining piece. All right, so once you have that done, to top stitch this section, all you have to do is fold this up and press. Then how the pattern has you do this is very different than how I would normally do this, but we're gonna do it their way because it's fun. What the pattern has you do is it has you stitch up the sides, across the top, and then down the side securing the pocket closed while top stitching the section. It's a good way to kind of do two steps in one. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch up this at an eighth of an inch, stitch across the top at an eighth of an inch and stitch down the other side at an eighth of an inch. And again, only the exterior is folded up. Your lining stays down. Once we have the pocket closed and the top top stitch, I'm gonna trim down this extra fabric that I have for my lining and I'm gonna trim off some of the zipper tape, not all of it. And when trimming the zipper tape, you wanna make sure you melt down those edges. Once you have your front pocket ready, what we're gonna do now is attach our tag. You could have attached it down on the bottom section before you closed up the pocket but since i've already done that we're just going to put it on the top which looked fine on my other bag so we're going to mark our center on our top by folding in half and doing a tiny little notch on the top and i mean like tiny like very very tiny very tiny and we're going to measure down i'm going to go two and a half inches yeah, let's go two and a half inches from the bottom, which is basically like right above the top stitching. And that's where I'm gonna put my tag. So I'm going to put double-sided tape on the back, like a zoom, and center that along my top. Again, two and a half inches down. Centering my tag, keeping it straight, like that. Then we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna top stitch this into place. Once you have this set, double check and make sure that it measures the length that it tells you in the pattern. Or you could take your pattern piece, your side piece, and make sure it is the same height. Mine is slightly too tall. So what I'm gonna do is once I get this stitched on, I'm just gonna trim off the top edge the pattern does recommend that you don't trim the bottom, just the top. So to attach the side pieces, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, center piece, leave this right side up, take your side piece, lay that right side down. I'm gonna move my zipper to the center just so it's not in my way. And since my panel is a little bit bigger, I'm just gonna line it with the bottom and clip into place. like this and then i'm going to repeat that to the second side taking that flipping it right sides together aligning it with the bottom and then i'm going to clip this into place as well so we can get both of these done at the same time once we have these sides clipped we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew these down at a half of an inch seam allowance Once you have those signed pieces secured on, I'm gonna trim up the extra that I have hanging up from my top panel just by riding along my side accent pieces. You could also take a rotary blade and just like, but this is fine, good enough. So what we're gonna do for this next part is we are going to press the seams toward the side panels. Being a nice smooshy smoosh. 
it's probably just going to be easier for me to hold this down at the chain. But we're going to do this for both sides. We're going to press the seams toward the side panel, opening this up, and we're going to top stitch along this fold at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that set, your panel is going to look like this, where you have your two side panels on, your front panel with your functioning zipper. Now we're going to put this to the side and we are going to repeat the process for the back panel and the extra side pieces. So grab your exterior back panel and your two other side pieces and repeat the process where you're going to take your straight edge, right sides together, clip into place, like this. Same on the other side. Take your panels, go right side together, and clip right sides together as well. Like this. Once you have that set, we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and stitch these sides together using a half of an inch seam allowance. Once we have that set, we're going to repeat what we did for the front panel for the back. We're going to fold the sides out and press the seams into the sides and we are going to top stitch along this seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that set, your exterior back panel should look like this where everything lines up nicely and you should have your front panel and your back panel. And what the pattern recommends next is for you to attach your interfacing. If you're using foam interfacing, you can stitch this along. Since I'm using fusible, it's going to be interesting how it's going to attach to the vinyl. I'm going to attempt it. Probably not going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> and then we'll move on to building the lining. All right, so you're going to take your exterior piece and your interfacing, your like usable fleece in my case. And usually you, you would do this the other way, but since I'm using vinyl, I don't want my iron to touch that. So I'm doing it backwards. And I know that this is not the correct way to fuse on fusible fleece. It's just working for the application in which I need it. And I'm being very careful not to touch my iron to my vinyl. And I'm using a lot of steam, like it's getting smoky in here, but it's fine. It worked. So as you see, it worked. And then we flip it over and nothing melted. You're going to repeat this process for the back panel as well. Now, moving on to the lining, this is going to be a quick process. We're going to grab one of our lining panels and we're going to flip it wrong side down. Row, right, right, wrong side up, right side down. Yeah, yeah, this way. Once you have it laying with the right side down, wrong side up, you're going to measure three inches down from your center, which we could find the center the same way we find the center on all my other stuff by folding in half, taking scissors and doing the tiny, tiny, tiny to felt the pouch. Then measure three inches down and we're going to make a box eight inches across. So I like to just center my four and draw my line. Like a shoe. And then measure down three eighths of an inch. I always have issues with that one. Yeah, that looks right. And finish up your box. <laughs> and then we're going to draw a center line going almost all the way. I like to stop about a half inch from each edge. And then do these little diagonals. That is a crooked line. It's all right, it's not gonna matter. <laughs> like I said, it's ugly, but it's there. Box, fine. Then we're gonna flip right side up again. Measure two inches down from your center. And then take your pocket piece, take one of the pocket pieces, 
Again, finding the center. For this, I'm not going to mark it. I'm just going to fold it and crease it. And lay that right sides together over your lining, centering it with your lining piece. Then we could clip this into place. We could tape this into place. Hold on for dear life. I'm just going to hold on for dear life as we flip this over. Whoop how. Making sure we don't move that pocket piece. And we're going to stitch around the outer rectangle that we drew, securing the pocket piece onto the lining. Once we have that stitched, I did go a little off kilter with my box, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. You're going to take your seam ripper and start cutting along that line that we made. Yes, mine is not centered. It's fine. Just do a little pump. And then I'm going to take my scissors that I like using for this because they have a nice like pointy point. And I'm going to cut along that line. Getting to my diagonals. And then I'm going to cut as close to my stitching as I can, giving myself an anxiety attack, thinking I'm going to cut through my stitches, but don't actually cut through your stitches. Very close, but not enough to cut the thread. Same on the other diagonal. Scary close, but thread still intact. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Then, once you have that cut, what we're going to do is pull this pocket through this hole that we made. Like so. And we're going to roll the seams, pulling the lining pocket all the way through. Give it a finger press to kind of get it where you want it to go. And then I am actually going to press this because I'm actually using cotton and I can actually press it. Oh my God, that never happens. <laughs> and then we're going to press to hold all of this down. Whoop how! Okay, once you have that prepped, grab your zipper and some double-sided tape. And I'm going to put double-sided tape right along the very edge of my zipper, since I'm not going to be stitching over that with this application. Like a so. Well, bam. And then we're going to tape this onto our zipper. I mean, our little hole. So put, I like to put my little pulley in the center. Having it closed going to the left, just because I'm left-handed. I like it that way. You put your zipper how you want it. Get your tape centered inside your little open in here. And I like to start at the top, pulling the tape off of my zipper tape. Hey, all the way. Come on, don't fight me. Yay. And now that I just moved everything, I have to realign, which is fine. Like so. Pressing that into place, getting it how you like it. And then repeat on the bottom. Pull the tape off. If it won't fight me. Or just rip, that's fine, you know, you're so nice. There we go. And then do the same. Smoosh. Hee hee hee. And then once we have this how we like it, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch along this zipper box opening at an eighth of an inch, pretty much just riding my zipper, my uh, pressing foot along our little opening here. Once that is done, your zipper is going to be fully functional, minus the back pocket part, which we're going to do now. So grab your second pocket piece, flip your lining panel wrong sides down, and you're going to see the right side of your pocket piece. Take your other pocket piece, lay it right side over your other one, and we are just going to clip into place going up the side, across the top, down the other side. We're not touching the bottom.
All right, once we have this clipped, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch along these three clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance, securing the pocket panel, but leaving this opening because that's how we're gonna turn the bag right side out. Once I have that stitched, I like to sew that on the machine like this with the uh, lining facing up and I just bend my lining out of the way as I'm stitching to get to all of the pieces in the pocket panel. So for the next step, we have to draw our darts. You're going to take your dart placement, your dart tracing template, and flip your lining piece wrong side up. Take your dart, put that right along the bottom edge, lining up the uh, bottom flap, the curve, and heading up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to trace where the darts go. I'm actually doing them cor the correct way this time. So just trace your dart. And then once you have that, we're going to just flip this way. And that should line up perfectly with your other side. And same thing, draw the dart like this, having your two darts. Then we're going to repeat the process for the other four pieces. I mean, the other three pieces, the other lining and the two exterior. Okay, once you have the darts drawn on all four of your main panels, the two exteriors and the two linings, what we're going to do is we're going to prep these like correct dart darts, unlike what I did last time I did darts. What we're going to do is we are going to take our drawn lines, fold those together, lining up your line here, and that should line your drawn line up with each other. Clip that into place. And I like to clip it like this. Same on the other side clip into place. And now we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew directly on that dart line for both sides. Once that's done, it should look like this where it kind of is making like a bowl shape. But when you poke out the darts, it creates like this nice rounded bottom. We're going to trim this seam allowance down, cutting it to about a quarter of an inch, I think is what the pattern said. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. If not, it's going to be a quarter inch anyway. Wapow! This is basically just cutting out the extra bulk. Like so. And you have that pressed, I mean, that cut. What we're going to do is repeat that process for the other panels. I'm just going to zoom through that, getting them all to look like this. Once you have all of the darts sewn on both of your exterior pieces and both of your lining pieces, we're good to put these to the side as we work on our magnetic snap closure pieces. Once you have your four closure pieces, scrap woven interfacing, scrap stiff interfacing, your magnetic snap, your closure tab pattern piece, your seam ripper, and a marking utensil, we're good to move on. So take, I'm going to take my pointy edge of my stiletto, take your pattern piece and center that over your fabric and mark the hole telling you where your center is going to be. I just do a little daddy dot. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Oh, actually, you can see that pretty well. Aha, hole. And we are going to flip that over. Grab our washer. Center that over our hole. And draw two little lines in your washer area and stop your magnetic snap from rolling away. Grab your uh, 
extra stiff stabilizer piece and just draw your two lines as well. And yes, for this, I'm just using a pen because it's going to get cut out anyway, so I don't worry about it. Then take your seam ripper part and seam rip these lines. You want to go smaller. You'd rather go smaller than bigger. You don't want it that wide. You want it just enough to get the prongs through. Just enough. Actually, you can go down a little bit. There we go. Same on your stiff piece. Nice little wapow. Then pick a side of your snap. I'm just going to go with this one because I grabbed it. And stick that through your little slits you made. So it goes through. Take your extra stabilizer and put it through as well. Whoosh. Then take your washer. Go over like that. And I like to bend with my prongs going outward. You bend them however you want to. Going inward, outward, sideways, it does not matter as long as it's securing it on. You could also use uh, rivet magnetic snaps for this. That would probably be easier, but struggle bus. Like that. And then we're going to repeat the process onto the other one. Like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try to fuse this woven interface over the prongs, keeping it so the metal isn't going to wear down our lining portion of this. I'm going to attempt that. If it works, great. If not, I'll figure out something else. Okay, so that method worked on this one. So I'm going to show you what I did. I have my vinyl piece, lay that right side down, take my woven interfacing. Lay that sticky side, like glue side, down. Take some extra, extra fabric, and just move that so you don't set the place on fire and destroy my hard work. And just press going around your metal piece. I can't get it to stay up there. Ooh, I can, but it's fine. So just give it a nice little wishy wishy whoosh. And again, I'm using a lot of seam. And then, haha, -ha, it's stuck. So now I'm going to trim down the excess and then we can move on to the next part. All right, now that those are prepped and your interfacing is ironed on, take one of your one piece with your snap and one of your lining pieces and lay them right sides together. We're going to clip along these three edges, keeping the top straight edge open. like that getting it all nice and then we're going to do the same on the other one take your other piece other lining right sides together and clip keeping the top open all right perfect once you have that set we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along these three edges at a quarter inch seam allowance leaving the top open on both of these All right, once we have that set, we're gonna take some pinking shears and we're gonna trim down the seam allowance a little bit, especially around those corners. Making it so when we go to turn this right side out, it'll be more like pliable to be pokey and round. So just whoop-de-whoop -whoop and pull. Whoop-de-whoop, -whoop. like so. Same on the other one. And then once you have that set, we are good to turn this right side out through that top hole that we left open. So, pew, pew, pew. Again, this is when tiny fingers are beautiful. I love my tiny fingers when it comes to these. Go ahead and push that out. 
with a nice little press like so perfect same on the other one then what we're going to do is head over the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch along this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're going to close up this top hole as well Once you have those set, it should look like this, where you have your two snaps and your lining. Grab your lining pieces. Now I'm gonna use the one that already has my center notch. Find your center, then take your snap piece and center that over your center, clipping that into place. You want the magnetic snap part to face up away from your lining like that. And we're going to do the same thing on our other lining piece. Then what we're going to do is head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this closure piece onto our lining using a quarter inch seam allowance going right across the top. Once you have the closures attached to both of your lining pieces, these are good to set aside. And now we get to work on the strap. So grab your strap pieces. I got two of them. This is going to be fun because this vinyl is sticking to my presser foot a lot. It's okay. We'll make it work. So grab one of your panel pieces, your handle pieces, and some clippy clips. And what we're going to do is we're going to find our center. I'm just going to make a crease does not have to be perfect, just enough to see it. There we go. And then take your raw edges, fold them in toward the center, and then fold your folds up to meet one another and clip into place. Do that the whole way along. And repeat the process on the other handle. like that. Once you have both of your straps clipped into place, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to eighth inch stitch along the folded edges, creating our handles. This is going to be fun. All right, so that honestly was a nightmare. <laughs> This vinyl was not easy to work with, and it created like this ripple that I'm not sure if you guys can see. So I'm deciding to scrap these two. And I cut some webbing straps to make my life easier. <laughs> Once you have whatever strap you're doing, whether you actually had a strap that worked or you're taking the easy way and doing webbing like I did, grab your exterior panel and some clippies and the pattern recommends that you take your strap and put it right at your seam where your center meets your accents and clip that into place then bring that to the other side making sure nothing's twisted line that up with your seam and clip that into place as well and repeat this process for your other exterior piece once you have both of your straps clipped onto your exterior pieces, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to base this into place. I'm just going to do this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just securing this on there nice and tight. Once you have both of the handles stitched on, what we're going to do now is we are going to clip our exteriors together. So poke out one side of your darts, take your other side, lay those right sides together. And I like to start by lining up my seams for where my accents meet my center panels. Clip those into place. Same on the other side. Line up the darts. 
And now the pattern does recommend that you open these seams. I'm going to try. I cut the one a little too small, so it's going to be difficult to open, but it's fine. We'll make it work. Keep. Same on the other side. Yep. And now just continue clipping all the way around the outside of the bag. We are not clipping this top part. All right, once you have that set, do the same process onto the lining, clipping together the U, not clipping the top. All right, perfect. Once you have both of those set and ready to go, we're gonna take our exterior and we're gonna stitch a half of an inch around the three edges, keeping the top open. Once you have the exterior stitched, we're gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna stitch up the lining. Stitching up the lining, we're gonna start at a half of an inch and then we're gonna gradually grow to five eighths of an inch, going around and then growing, uh, going back to an half of an inch as we get to the top. This allows this straight section to be the same size as the exterior while making the rest of the lining tighter, keeping it uh, more snug to go in the lining instead of having it like a baggy droopy lining. All right, perfect. Once you have your lining set, make sure that you have your pocket zipper open. And then we're gonna take our exterior and turn that right side out. All right, and this is where you can get like a kind of sneak peek. You can see how your bag is looking so far. And this is looking really cute, even with the handles being different than what I thought. Perfect. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our exterior and put it inside the lining. I am going to make sure that my zipper is going toward the lining panel that doesn't have a zipper. So kind of like my zipper is down here. I'm going to take my exterior with my zipper up here and stick it in there, making sure everything is going in. The straps are going in. The flappy flaps are in. Now line up your side seams. You could open these if you want. You can push them to one side. It does not matter. I'm gonna open. And then we're gonna clip around this whole top edge. Perfect. Once you have that whole top section clipped, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around this entire circle at a half of an inch seam allowance. Okay, perfect. Once you have that all stitched around and everything is how you like, the pattern does suggest that you do trim this seam allowance and these uh, side seam allowances in half. I'm not going to do that because when I did trim this top section, it did cause me an issue with my handles on the first bag I made. So I'm just going to let this rock like this and just going to turn this right side out through the lining pocket piece. All right, when turning this out, make sure you poke out your bottom darts. Get those in there nice. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and clip the lining inward and take your connector pieces and clip those inward as well. I don't think I explained that right. We're gonna take 
our lining and make sure that it is rolled and we're pretty much just clipping the seam to help with top stitching that's like the quick version of explaining that okay so once you have the top clipped you want to make sure that you got your lining in there smooshy 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 all right your lining is in and everything looks good we are now going to top stitch making sure as we top stitch we catch our connectors make sh making sure we're hitting that securing that to the exterior of the bag this should be easy except for this part here which i might figure out something to do with i'll do with that when i get there Okay, while I was at the sewing machine, I decided to take some tissue paper and use that as a buffer so my presser foot didn't get stuck to the vinyl. And with that, all I have to do to get it out of the seams is just rip it and pull it out. There are some parts I might have to take some um, tweezers to to get the rest out, but it's an easy fix and it helped prevent my... Um, my presser foot from getting stuck to the bag. So I'm gonna pick all these out. Once you have your bag ready to go and you are happy with your top stitching, everything looks really good, we need to close up the pocket in the lining. So we're gonna pull this out, kind of just take it in your hands like this, fold, the edges in about a half inch quarter inch just fold it in get all the raw edges in there and then we are going to clip this into place holding all the raw edges inside i like to start at the corners clip since that's where i can pull it the most taut clip and then just work my way inward making sure I'm catching all of the raw edges and clip. Once you have that set how you like it, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and just stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch, closing up that hole. Once you have your pocket stitched up and you made sure that you caught all of the edges, stick that back in zip up your bag make sure your lining is how you want it and then your bag is complete and our bag is finished this bag came together really easily minus my issues with the strap which was just because of the vinyl that i used if i had a teflon foot or if i remembered the um tissue paper trick when i was doing the straps it would have been so much easier but it's okay because the webbing straps actually look really cute with the bag. It came out really nice. I love the simplicity of this bag and knowing that I can add onto it if I wanted to. Say on the inside, if I wanted to add like another pocket on the other side, if I wanted to do like a mesh pocket on the inside, if I wanted to do a second zipper pocket on the outside, I could do that, which I like. It's cool. It's fun. It is definitely a beginner bag. You can make it more difficult by the materials that you're using. So for me, using this sticky vinyl, it definitely made this more challenging than if I were to just use a full canvas or a full cotton bag and not have a problem. I do think using the fusible fleece was a really smart choice. It gives the bag some structure, but keeps it squishy. As compared to my other bag, where I used a more firm interfacing, this doesn't really have the squish that this one has. I can like squish this one and like smoosh it and it goes. This one, she don't squish. So definitely play with your interfacing on this one. Try different interfacings, try different materials, play around with it. It's a really fun bag, and to make it even better, it's a free pattern from Bagstock, so 
why not try it? It's not like it's going to cost you anything. <laughs> But um, I do think this was a great pattern. I did have a lot of fun making it. I did learn that I need to look into getting a Teflon foot for this machine. I'm not sure if there is one, but I may have to find one or kind of like rig something up to make it work. Because I do work with sticky vinyl a lot. And it was definitely a challenge on this bag. And I had to get creative in a few spots. But yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you like the bag. Uh, if you want to try it out, I'll have the link to Bagstock's uh, website in the description. And again, I got the beautiful Buffy canvas from Do or Die Custom Fabrics. And I'm going to have way too much fun just staring at this and pointing out all of my favorite scenes from the show. I've seen the show a lot. I can probably recite it at this point. Not the point. Point is the bag. <laughs> So if you want to get um, Buffy fabric, I'm not sure if they still have it, but I will put the do or die uh, custom fabrics link in the description as well. And if you guys want to support the channel, like, comment, subscribe. I'll also have a link to my Patreon on there. And you know, it was fun hanging out with you guys. I hope to see you next time. Have a nice day.